Hi there, I'm John Vaughn from Riverwinds Consulting and this is Publishing Defined. Today I'm going to discuss DRM or Digital Rights Management. I'll be discussing it in relationship to book publishing. DRM can be a confusing topic and it certainly provokes strong feelings among many people. First, DRM is a form of protection used with ebooks that limits the reader or buyer with their ability to copy it or share it with others. DRM is widely used in the book publishing industry as it is in the film, gaming, music, and other creative industries. Companies such as Amazon, Apple, Google, Barnes & Noble all limit the buyer's ability to share the work with others. DRM works by having embedded code or programming tie the exact content to a user's account or to a particular device. Some DRM programs allow the user to share or copy content with a specific number of people or times. Others allow no sharing. According to its advocates, the goal of DRM is to prevent illegal sharing or piracy, which might deprive author or publishers from sales or royalties. There is very restrictive DRM that requires the user to be online the whole time while reading, less restrictive ones, which are more liberal about copying and sharing, watermarking, which is less invasive but pulls on the reader's conscience to play by the content's stated rules, all the way down to companies that impose no restrictions on the material. The arguments for DRM are that the material costs money or time to create, and therefore people should have to pay for it. It also shows the reader that the company views the content as having value and therefore requires payment versus free content, let's say at a website. There is a vocal group that is stridently anti-DRM. Some of the points they make are, DRM costs money and adds to the product costs. DRM causes aggravation to the user and leads to frustration among buyers or readers, even if they want to do such innocent things as read on multiple devices or make a backup copy. DRM prevents legitimate sales because of the hoops that are, requi that are usually required. And most of all, they are, they are pointless as there are always workarounds or hacks. Whether pro or con, it becomes an individual or institutional decision. There are conflicting studies that say when books are free of DRM, sales increase, that pirating does not have a negative effect on ebook sales, and there are studies that say the exact opposite. The decision may be decided already for you in that if you are going to use a large distribution channel like Amazon or Apple or others, they require DRM. However, you may be able to dial back some of the choices on how restrictive they are. When you have to make a decision about using DRM and how restrictive to make the copying and sharing options, I would suggest you think through the paper book parallel. That is, would an owner of a paper copy be able to do the things you are trying to restrict the ebook owner from doing? In scholarly publishing, particularly in the textbook arena, the majority of publishers use DRM. When you are considering DRM, purchase a few ebooks from your competitors on various devices and in various formats and see what they do. This may inform your decision as to what is happening in your marketplace. There are many companies that supply DRM, from Adobe to all the larger platforms mentioned here. There are others as well. Simply search them on the web. After that, search on YouTube on how to circumvent those same measures. It's educational. We would all love to live in a world where all high quality information is free, or if information was available for a fee, that they would only legally share it. We don't. But it's up to you to decide what works for your content and your business model. Well, that's it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, or see the link below for a playlist on more videos dealing with digital rights management. And make comments below or email me with any questions. Thanks so much and take care.